Right friends, in this uh, video we are going to watch VDC and uh, the theory portion of VDC. Alright, so what is VDC? VDC basically is uh, the Cisco Nexus operating system software can divide a single physical switch into up to four virtual switches, okay, which are referred to as virtual device contacts or VDCs. Now each VDC operates like a standalone switch, meaning that each has a distinct configuration file, a set of physical ports, and separate instance of control pro uh, plane protocols such as routing and spanning tree. This feature provides an option to use a single physical switch to serve multiple roles within a data center topology. Okay, the main elements which are getting virtualized here are control plane, data plane, forwarding plane we call it management plane and software partitioning okay when you enter into an access switch a brand new switch the first thing you are going to face is a default VDC and uh, that is an older version before 6.1 uh, we are going to face default VDC now what is default VDC basically default VDC is basically supported on Cisco Nexus 7k and uh, 7000 and 9000 platforms it's not supported on 5k's and 2k's Okay, VDC ID 1 is the default VDC which has a very special role that it can create, manage and delete other VDCs. It cannot be deleted itself and it can control shared switch resources like interface allocation. It is replaced with admin VDC from 6.1 NXOS version onwards. What is a known default VDC? Well, known vi default VDC is something that no default, okay, and uh, it's practically that means that th these are the VDCs which are completely isolated and they are independent switches. So they do not have authority to create any other switch. They are only going to manage their self. They are strictly separated. They have completely separate data forwarding and control plane. Uh, some portion of it may be you know, the sharing, but mostly it's like an actual switch or ac actual physical switch. But uh, it's a, it's at the end of the day it's a logical switch with the dedicated interfaces VDC fault resolution process is pretty simple and it's it's is a true virtualization I, I must say that uh, what it really provides you is it provides you separate OSPF uh, process separate EIGRP separate VLAN numbers or you can probably you can say that it provides you all layer 2 and layer 3 resources at least 95% of them do not have any dependency on each other. What does that mean practically? If it means that if let's say OSP of process crashes in one of the VDC, it does not impact the other VDCs. So it's a complete fault isolation. Like in VLANs, you have complete you know isolation of one traffic doesn't really go to other VLAN or the ARP broadcast is not sent, something like that. Now resource allocation. Well, when we talk about resource allocation, it's really important to know there are multiple type of resources and uh, those resources have multiple impact on the NXOS operating system as well as the VDC. So some resources are global resources which are shared by all the VDCs like the, the operating system of the NXOS itself. All the VDCs are going to use the same operating system to boot. So it's practically boots up and then the VDC comes on, uh, you know, you have NTP uh, server configuration or COPP policies which are actually applied for the chassis rather than the VDC. Uh, span sessions you can only create out of the default VDC. You cannot create it in you know other VDCs inside them. There are a lot of resources which are shared. So you have like management interfaces or fans or power supply. They are all going to be shared resources. Dedicated resources are basically the interface which are allocated to particular VDC and which are participating in, in data forwarding. Well, uh, you can understand that that cannot be shared. So that's a dedicated resources. Now these resources can be either manually assigned by entering into each VDC or they can be assigned by using something called a resource template. A resource template is, is more of a dynamic method of applying the same set of resource uh, policies or resources to multiple VDCs. You can create, it's like, you know, you can create certain, uh, it's like macros that we had used to have in uh, older switches, you know, the, the iOS switches. So you create the macro once and you can apply it wherever you want to apply and it saves you time. So resource template is the same method. Well, new feature in NXOS 6.1 is that you can have uh, something called admin VDC. It's going to, it, it uh, replaces the default VDC. 
Now this, if you look at default VDC, the benefit was that you can manage all the stuff from the same VDC and it can be participating in the data forwarding. But the problem was that that's not complete auto man management. It is not very secure to do that. And admin VDC resolves all those issues. So you, the admin guy is completely separate from, uh, you know, the data forwarding people out there. And this guy is dedicated for that, cannot allocate any interfaces. It can only be used for management purpose and nothing more. It's almost the same that you have in admin, uh, you know, uh, context in the multiple context in Cisco ASA. You cannot have, uh, you know, uh, and that's a huge difference between admin uh, context and system context. So comparing that to here, it's uh, the same process. You have admin VDC and you have default VDC uh, here in uh, NXOS. Uh, NX OS 6.1 also you know, enables you to have a VDC or per VDC CPU resource reservation. So it gives you that kind of capability. Well, v uh, by default, Cisco Nexus JC has some roles assigned. So the first role that we have is a network admin, which is a full control of the default VDC. And uh, this role can create, delete, or change non-default VDCs out there. So this guy is a complete admin. It's like a root access. He can do whatever he want to do. The second role that we have is network operator. And this guy is a read only writes in the default VDC. So he lands up into the default VDC, but he has only the read only options out there or the read only writes he has. And not a great idea. Not, you know, it doesn't have much of the power, but if somebody want to see show run some config, he, this guy can really do that. Admin VDC is specifically dedicated for these. That, so the other two roles are VDC admin and VDC operator are basically for known default VDCs, if I say that. Uh, VDC admin is full control of a specific VDC, but has no rights in the default VDC or other known default VDC. VDC operator role read only rights in a specific VDC. Okay, when the network administrator or network operator switches to a known default VDC, the same level of rights are inherited. Okay, do we require a license to do VDCs? Yes, of course. So you require advanced services license to create VDCs. And if you don't have that, don't worry, you still get 120 days grace period license and uh, you can utilize it. But after 120 days, you really have to uh, you know, purchase a license there. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create the VDC and all the theoretical portions of or, or all the practical aspect of whatever theory we have done in this video. Thanks a lot.